Wait. What's up, Homestead homies? It's off grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And today you had questions. We've got answers. So, um, get to our question and answer video. We wrote down some of the questions that we have. We're not going to be able to get every single question. A lot of them were redundant. And some of them we've already answered in videos. I'm trying to go through those, direct you to those videos so you can watch them. And then if you still have questions, feel free to ask. So we're just going to knock out a few right now. Uh, we don't want to make it too long of a video. And uh, we'll see if we can attack your questions. All right. Um, so one of the questions that um, a lot of people left, they're talking about Stacy's hats. Why does she always wear hats? And this and that hats and hats and hats. And also, Kim and Carolyn, they want to know about the gray hair. Like, why is the ponytail dark? Why is the, you know, why don't you show your hair? And then they talk kind of about um, going gray, you know, the process and the, it growing out. So, Stacy will address these questions. Okay. Um, okay, guys. The real reason I started wearing a hat was uh, about 30 years ago. Ooh, uh, so long, long ago. Long time ago. <laughs> I, uh... Work with kids. I've worked with children my whole life. <clears throat> I've worked with kids. There. I know, I did. I was a gymnastic coach. I, you know, have worked with kids. I have been, schools. Yeah, I teach. Um, my degree is in education, so I teach, um, like, physical education in the schools, um, private schools. So um, we had a lice outbreak, and I decided to put a hat on. And I started, you know, when I was working, because I'm very athletic. I, you know, I'm a personal trainer and I teach group exercise classes. And so I work out a lot. So my hair would always get in my face. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this hat is awesome. You know, I don't have to worry about the little fuzzies or anything. So it's not for religious reasons. No. So um, I just would always wear a hat. And it's just very convenient. I don't have to worry about my hair. I don't have to worry about anything. So that's how I started wearing a hat, and it just kind of became this thing, and I love hats now. I wear them. Why are you laughing? Those the cats are cracking me up. So I, I just have always worn a hat. I mean, he's known, you know, our whole marriage, I've always, I wear a hat. But I don't wear one when we go to bed. <laughs> I do wear them a lot. And I then think I when do, we first met, you didn't wear them as much. No, I wear my hair down. I do, right, yeah. Right. But on you, the farm. But at work, I mean, you know, it was your daily, like, work outfit. Yeah, whatever, my work outfit, but, right. But now on the farm, I wear It's much more it, conducive. But I wear it more because right. I've been letting my hair grow out because right. I don't want any chemicals on my hair. I want to be natural. Not no, I'm not letting anyone have a peek right now. <laughs> but I'm letting my hair grow out. Um, and you know, if you're trying to let your hair grow out, because I used to color it forever and ever, it's a long process. And I got just recently about eight inches cut off my hair. Um, that's why some people. What was that? <laughs> it was your finger? No, it felt like a bug or something. So, um, <laughs> so uh, I got. It was your hair? <laughs> Oh, stop it. So I got, you know, they just cut off of it and it took off the old color. So a lot of people are asking why is my hair darker? It's because that's my natural color. So it's trying to grow in. I'm getting close to, you know, where to the unveiling. Doing. Yeah. All right. Question number two. It's from Lindy, Tennessee. One of my favorite commenters. How do you cook outside on rainy days? And of course you can't use the sun oven on a rainy day. And if it's sprinkling outside, possibly you could cook outside, but not if it's a gully washer. So how do you do it? Well, if it's raining and sprinkling, I still cook. It's not a problem. Um, it's not. We don't. If it's gully washing and raining like that, yeah. then we have salads with uh, sardines. Sardines on them. Or we have some maybe Sandwiches. And we have leftovers. Yeah. Uh, if we had leftovers like that uh, zucchini that we made, that was zucchini lasagna. I'll link that right there. Yum, yum, that was yum. good cold. That yeah, was that really was really good, good cold. cold. Um, but, you know, if it's just raining a little bit, you know, that's why I wear a hat. I have to worry <laughs> about my hair. Because out here, you know, I don't, you know, you're sweaty, you're hot, you know, it's snowing, it's raining or whatever. I don't have to worry about nothing. My hair looks good all the time. <laughs> all right. Next question. Most of you guys will get that. <laughs> I don't get it. I know. <laughs> well, who will get it? everyone else watching <laughs> all right from Charlene Fitzgerald what did your faith have to do with your decision to homestead and she um, got that comment because the name of our farm is growing in faith farm that's what we call our place um, that's when we came out here we we 
thought about it, thought about it. And it kind of has a double connotation. It has growing in faith because we're growing spiritually. And it also is mean growing in faith, meaning that we're planting the seeds and we're having faith that they'll come up and that we'll have food. So it was like a dual purpose um, name that I came up with ingeniously. <laughs> We both did. Oh we my did, goodness! But I, he, I, so, I did. Yeah, you did not. <laughs> you did. Go on. He did not. He did not. All right. So it, 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 it was. We're a team. <laughs> it was a. Um, it was a factor in us coming out here when we sold everything. We wanted to leave Egypt. If you see some of our earlier videos um, of us posting, um, we have a little thing where it kind of shows us in the city, and then we talk about how we wanted to go back in time, but not that far. Um, you know, because then it showed us wearing like um, garb from the first century. But uh, we wanted to leave Egypt. We wanted to check out of the system. We wanted to um, be closer to our food. So it, it was I, all relevant. Can I add something to this? Well, go ahead. You hogged up the first two questions. I know. Well, the, we, we, you know, when we left, I love my job. I love what I do. Yeah. You know, it's wonderful. And I said, I'm always going to keep working. I'm going to keep working. And he kept saying, when we move out here, you're not going to, you know, you're going to keep working. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Right. I, yeah, you won't want to work anymore. And I'm like, oh, yes, I will. Yes, I will. <laughs> well, and I thought, you know, you always say, I'll never do that. Well, we got out here and now I'm just down to two days a week. And that's, you know, our goal was to get down. But I never thought it would happen so quickly. Mm -hmm. And now I can see myself giving that up totally where I would would have never said I'll never stop doing that so that was one of the main reasons why because we could have moved anywhere that we wanted to but one of the reasons why is because Stacy really loved to you know what she was doing she loves working with the kids and her seniors and her people that she coaches and stuff so that was a, a huge reason why we wanted to kind of stay around um, where we were and that's why we drew the circle on the map and that radius of how comfortable for the drive would be and we stuck to that Next question. <laughs> Daniel Bean, do we plan to have solar or propane? Well, we have propane a gas grill. <laughs> All right. So and you have that weed thing that you burn with propane sometimes. The weed dragon. Yeah. But th when we came out here, we were thinking about propane, but I think that propane would be the last choice. I think uh, solar panels. Never say never. I mean, we, you, you know. Here. Yeah, I'll never say never again. Here, guys. We don't, I don't have a problem with people that have solar panels or are you using that technology, but okay, for in us, for our situation, we want to be uh, very independent, right? So an ice house, getting ice from our pond, to me, is much more independent than having solar panels powering a refrigerator. A refrigerator could go out, a solar panel could go out, a battery could go out. That's my whole thought process, okay? But will we never, ever have solar panels? I doubt it. We probably will end up with them at some time in the future, at a minimum, just to power our, uh, you know, laptop, laptop. and the f phone uh, charging. Maybe run a fan, but it's not going to be some big, expensive system. We don't, you know, not run an AC or refrigerators and stoves, electric stoves and washers and dryers. I mean, the whole point of us coming out here was to kind of simplify our life, not to drag all that stuff out here and then spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in trying to maintain that status quo i can get more duck yeah i mean <laughs> so we don't have any problem with those technologies guys um if you have them that's fine we don't begrudge anyone for having them but for right now we can't see the cost benefit we're cool with our oil lamps we're cool with our um refrigeration setup it's all it's it works yeah, the fine only thing i mean honestly the only thing i would ever really want you know, more electricity or solar or whatever you want to call it, is if we could, for just like those days when it gets so hot, yeah. you know, like some type of air conditioner or a fan or but something. But even if we had the air conditioner, we could run it off a generator of more cost effect right. effect effective right. because it's not really that hot here that long. So we could puppy dog by with the air conditioner. We just detox in that time. Right. We have a nice cleansing and we make sure right. we're drinking plenty of water and supplementation to help us get through it. So we, we don't plan on having solar, but I could see it popping up, okay? All right, Lu, Lu, Luna Stars, what has been the hardest part of moving off-grid and what has been the easiest part? You answer, I don't, I didn't know, I, I didn't, that's hard. What's the hardest part and the easiest part of moving off-grid? Do the easiest part first. 
the easiest part, I guess, is just doing it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, you know, it is. It's a process. You kind of get out here. It's all exciting, right. and everything is wonderful. And every Your day is adrenaline's a new. Adrenaline's going. Everything's a, every day is a new adventure. Right. You know, you kind of go through it, and you you know the thing is, is just to take it as it comes. Because if you go into it with great expectations, you know. You might be let down. <laughs> right. Or you know, you, you don't want to expect anything. I mean, when you're homesteading, every day is like a, a new new adventure i mean something always happens or i think the hardest part would be the acclimation to the no ac because you know we're in our generations we were did you always have ac in your house when you were a kid yeah um that when i was probably no no maybe not as far as you can remember yeah when i was little little we probably didn't have as far as you can remember yeah as far as I can remember, we had AC too. I mean, I'm sure there was. Because I'm older than he is. Yes, much. <laughs> Not really, but the uh, air conditioning thing was probably the hardest thing to get a hold of because we went cold turkey because we were in the apartment, the one bedroom apartment that had AC, and then we moved out here to like <laughs> that was it. And that first summer was the hottest summer, 30 days of 100. So that was probably the hardest Oh, no, part. I have something that was, well, why when we moved out here? When we first moved out here, you know, you have nothing. You have grasses, weeds, everything like that, bugs. We had a lot of bug bites and ticks and all that when we first moved out here. So, you know, getting the guineas and, and now, you know, having the chickens running around, I mean, that really helps a lot. We don't have, I don't have any bug problems hardly at all, except for this year I've been stung a lot. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have some more on our next uh, five years off the grid stories. We're going to have some good stories about how the grass was uh, tall and, and so forth and so on. So that'll be a, a good follow-up. What's been the easiest thing? What do you think has been the easiest thing? I'm like, I, I'm at a loss for words. Because you know what? It, the easiest? Yeah, going off grid. What would you say? I can't think about it because everything was, I liked everything about it. We're doing these right off the cuff, guys. We don't. We haven't practiced them. I wrote down some questions, and we're sitting here going. I have off no idea what they are. So I would just say the easiest part of going off grid would. I, I mean, the animals are fun. Everything is just fun. doing. You know what? I'll have to say the easiest. Off grid, not animals. Just going off grid for people that just want to go off grid. The what easiest? was the easiest part? Yeah, people all. This is the number one question people ask. How could you live without electricity? That is like way down at the bottom of my difficulties, thing. right? Oh, the hardest part when we first went off grid is not having water. I, I'll answer okay, that. Okay, there you go. That's a good one. Not having water was definitely, definitely, definitely for me because I'm the one that has to do all the cooking and the washing and all that kind of stuff. Not having the water because it's I. Water in general, yeah. Well, yeah, but One if you're doing jugs, your thing, five gallon buckets, I, you know, I monitor. I know how much water it took to do everything. If you're going to take a bath, right. if you're going to do the dishes, if you, you know you're drinking, I mean, all this kind of stuff. So I was hauling it. I knew how much I had to have in my car when I was going places. How much would get me through if we couldn't get water? I needed to make sure I had backups. I mean, I think the easiest part of um, going off grid is being without electricity. Because really for us, it hasn't, it's been like nothing. It's been no big deal. The big thing is people say is your TV. Yeah. And we had stopped that before we had moved right. out. And if we want to watch a movie or whatever we have now, we laptop. have the laptop. We didn't get the laptop till like, it was a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, friend Trent, who brought us yeah. the Indian Runner, actually gave us the laptop. So we didn't have a laptop for a long time. So we would maybe watch little things on the well, phone Well, we had later that, no, on. we had that, uh. Oh, it was a portable DVD, DVD little player. Little junky little DVD player. So we would watch a movie, like you know, like right. this. And then for a while, we would watch little things on our phone when we <laughs> when figured we, it out. When we had the, when we had the little, it was like a little DVD player, you know, like for your car. So when Trent brought us up the um, the laptop, man, we were like, we were joking like, around, like we had big a screen big TV. screen TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know what? It makes those things so special. You know, people sit and you watch TV all day and all day and all that. You know, and you don't appreciate these things. So when it's time to sit down and really, yeah. we're going to sit down and we're going to watch something together. It was really nice that maybe at the end of the day we're tired, we work hard. So it really made it worthwhile. All right. All right, modern desert. So wait, what was the hardest and easiest? Just say hardest was water, not having water. And easiest was no electricity. Okay. Modern desert homestead. What plans are you making for the homestead to be sustainable as you age? All right, so you might have uh, caught it in several of our videos. We call it aging in place. Uh, we might do just a whole video dedicated to that topic. But basically what we're doing is we are, um, this is, the cabin is uh, home central, right? 
So we want to, uh, we put our food right outside the door, a few steps away. We put our apple trees um, a few steps away. So everything is right next to us. The paddocks, um, the barn is right here. Uh, the big barn that we collect the rainwater off of, that has our horses in it and chickens. <laughs> they go in there all the time. And then our sheep are over here and they're over here. So everything is really tight. The we pond, have 11 everything acres. We, and then at wherever we can look out our windows or doors, I mean, we, we can, can see, see everything. everything. We have 11 acres. Um, so uh, the main thing, our livestock, animals, everything is very close to walk to. So as we age, and the other, I think. Well, this, and anyway, I'm going to talk about this. If you talk about aging, you know, movement is the key to life. I was, if you don't move, you're going to lose it. So we move, and you're active. I mean, we got to keep moving. You're stealing my thunder. Go ahead. I mean, we I'm move just saying, and move. People and think like you're going to be like 60 or 70 years old, and you're going to be like you can't do but nothing. But you got to keep moving because right. you'll get like that if you don't move right. around. Right. Move it or use it or lose it. So um, in our minds, we're going to be uh, like Moses, right? <laughs> Up and down the mountain uh, at a ripe old age. Don't compare yourself to Moses. No, we're saying about age. You know, he was old and he was going up and down the mountain. That's how we're going to be. We're going to be 80, 90 years old, and we're going to be pretty much maintaining what we have here. And also, you have to scale back what you can do. Don't push yourself so hard. You just oh, we definitely won't back. be because, you know, this is what we're trying to hustle right now, get everything right. done so that we don't have to worry about we it. Just like do maintenance. Getting my window boxes in a back porch. Yeah, that, that kind of stuff, Karen. But uh, that's that's the thing. You want to build everything as close as you can to the house, um, and then as you age, you just decrease. If we have, for instance, twenty sheep now, maybe we get down to two or three when we're older. So we and don't then have you talk about wood about. and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, maybe we'll have so much wood in the last years, or you barter, you know, trade with somebody else. Right. If we have some sheep, you know, you kind of do right. it like that. You know, you kind of know who lives. Or you around sell you. the sheep and you buy the wood. Right. I mean, you you can always take care of your business. Uh, people There's sell a solution wood. to like everything. every problem. Yeah, there right. is. There, actually, there are no problems. There are only um, solutions. solutions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, John S. Uh, he says, "Do we use oil lamps or kerosene?" All right, so we use a um, kerosene alternative, and it's called Clean Burn, and basically, um, it's just an alternative to um, kerosene. It's supposed to be healthier, and less toxic. But most of the Amish, they all use kerosene around here, but we don't. And we also use olive oil. We made some olive oil lamps. Uh, maybe we'll do a video on that uh, in the future. Um, so those work pretty good, but that's uh, what we use at this present time. Easy, easy answer. And well, and then the other thing I do have is those little Ellie, those little. No, no, no! Stay on focus. Lanterns. Lamp or kerosene. Oh, okay, but That's you it. can get those little ones that you can. Yeah, push. there's battery stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, get those. A, we have like the if the kid, grandkids come up, you know, they have. We have little ones you can yeah, carry around. Headlamps and stuff yeah. too. All right. Headlamps. Rhonda Bowdy, she says hot water for baths and dishes. All right, so in the fall, in the spring, in the winter time, we have zero problem with hot water pretty much. We have a reservoir on the back of our wood cook with stove. A faucet, like a, has a faucet yeah. spigot, and then um, we also have two great big stainless steel pots on the stove at all times. Right, just keep it going all full the of time. Water, right. right, so we, we have hot water at our disposal. In the summertime, uh, we probably don't even use as much hot water as we do in the other times of the year, but we heat it on the LP gas stove until I build the outdoor kitchen. And I'm also going to be probably next year working on um, a system to deliver hot water on demand at our bath and our kitchen sink. And the other way you get hot water is you we have you have buckets and you just set them out in the sun. You could do that. And then they go ahead and they warm up. Right. I was just over at our Amish um, my Amish friend's house and um, sitting out because every night you know the kids are coming in, the older boys are coming back from working in the fields and all that. You know, and they had like seven um, buckets, buckets, five yeah. gallons of water, just sitting out so that they could Warm all, you know, you know, mix it with a little cool water. And it's been sitting out in this heat that we've been having. Yeah. It works out good. And then you have your warm water. So you have your certain buckets that you're going to use for your water like that. And you just heat it up outside. I mean, the sun is a powerful thing. We love our sun oven. And that would be one thing I definitely well, Why like. don't you do solar then? <laughs> all right. It doesn't, I know take, you, it doesn't I know, take a battery. I'm telling you, I, I, you guys, I'm right here with you. I know exactly when she says stuff. I'm like, I, thought, I can hear you guys. All right, You're, I'm channeling. <laughs> All right. So living weird says, um, what was the uh, first night in the log home? The very first night that we came inside and we were like, I carried her over the threshold, 
and we went uh, and we slept in the in the cabin. What was it like? Well, he had kept sending me during the week. He would always send me pictures of what he got done, which was really cool. And then I would come up on the weekends. And then we were downstairs, and we had the sleeping bags before. You know, this is when you're still constructing. Well, the first night. No, she means like when everything's done, and we we were like, wow, we're here. We have our bed upstairs. Everything's done, and we and it was the first night in the cabin. <laughs> I can't remember <laughs> because we got. I was up here all the time from all the building, yeah. and then and then I was here a long time. I don't know. I guess it's kind of different. Like if you um, purchase a home. And then you guys go there, and then like you have your first night in the home. Because it's like a so process. Yeah, so it, it was. We would be sleeping on the floor downstairs yeah. with a, a bed, a, a bunch, a bunch Those, of pies. That's oh. enough. That's from our stories. <laughs> Don't give away our stories. Then we have lots of stories. So uh, yeah, we you know I, we're downstairs for oh in, in a tent to outside in, in the house, yeah. and then finally upstairs in the loft. Yeah, we slept then, downstairs, then we made it upstairs. And but then, I mean, it's but a, you know what? I'll have to say the process of us doing it and trying to get things done is you know you can kind of go back and how you keep changing things so we're here living and doing it and you're like i don't like this here i want to move this here i mean we changed everything where we thought we were going to put things we change it because we are living it and kind yeah. of experiencing with the animals and stuff so we changed a lot as a, as a process of being here but, but I, I would say it was liberating you know that we we built this with our own hands we were off the grid we we you know it was finally like the cherry on top of the um ice cream icing or whatever on icing cake, on top or, yeah. of the cake because it was like we had set out to do something and like here it is like we, we, did we accomplished yeah. it right yeah. Yeah. so i think it was very it was a very liberating um feeling so yeah and, and we still have those that's the neat thing about it because you know like we put in the water system man and you turn that faucet for the first couple times and it's like woohoo yeah because i think you know you think you know you do something because we were without water for over four years and then now, you know, we have water, and it hasn't been that long, just a few months, and it seems like I've it's just, you kind of forget. You forget the, about the hardships. You forget days, about yeah. the hardships, and you kind of. She still cracks like, jokes about it, though. Ooh, look at my water coming out, so. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, and it's neat that you can still have those experiences. You know, some things, when you, when you do them, it's like that's the end of it, right? But with this kind of an experience, it's ongoing. Like, tomorrow could be like this whole, whole new exhilarating thing like wow that's so cool and look what we accomplished and but the thing is is I, I, I feel is if you guys don't experience hardships especially maybe when yeah. you're starting at home right. setting it doesn't help you no flavor well but not even that like let's Builds say something would happen where we can't have water we can't right. do this I know what to do right to get to do and to do things right. to deal with not having water um, and like if we would have just had a, bought a turnkey place and just been like, oh, everything's in place and then we just got here, that leaves you open to the vulnerabilities of it. If something goes down with that system, you wouldn't even know how to do it. That's another reason why we don't have solar and stuff is because we're learning how to live like totally without it. So if ever, if anything ever does happen, guys, we're not doomsdayers or any of that stuff um, anymore. We, we might have had a slight taste of that early on. But yeah, you can't live in fear. Yeah, we don't subscribe to any of that stuff. I don't think the economy is going to collapse and all this kind of stuff i just don't so but if 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 something were to happen we are totally fine because we're that's why we have butted out all that stuff so we don't rely on any of that stuff the solar panels the conveniences the ice box and, and we're not against all that yeah you guys can do no. it but all i'm saying is and we it, can maybe if do it, it goes down you right never know. But yeah but and that's the thing if we did do it and it did crash we already know how to handle it right if we you guys start of off doing it, it right. if you guys start off doing it and it crashes down on you and let's say let's say you have a solar and have refrigerator and everything and then something EMP whatever solar uh, uh, comet whatever and your stuff goes out you're gonna be like what and you're not gonna know how to do it so this for us is a great learning experience and then if we add the amenities later if they were to go south on us, we totally can be prepared for it. That's a, that's another one of our mindsets. The why we do yeah, we can say been there, done that. Right. Yeah. So you know yeah. how to handle it. If you're if you're so if you're pushy all the time, you're, you're not going to know. Maybe try some of these things, even though you have all your amenities. Maybe make sure you know you could get by with doing something like that. It's awesome stuff. Yeah. So this was just some of the questions. We're probably there's no gonna, more. 
No, we're going to probably do um, some more videos because we want to knock these questions, questions out. I know we had like 200 something questions. We're going to address some more of them, but we don't want to have like 50 minute videos. <laughs> so we're going to catch you guys on the next one. Um, don't forget, tomorrow is Tuesday. We're going to be dropping off our collaboration video for the What If. Uh, go for Green Living, Daniel and them down in Alabama started another collaboration. Uh, we're following Life in Farmland, and then we'll be passing it off to Road to the Farm. So if you haven't checked out their channels, maybe get familiar with them before we drop off our video tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. This is Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And I'm Stacy. And we'll see you on the next see one. See you guys. Is that enough? Boston, and they would go. And then we got familiar with each other. They knew my voice. You know, um, they say if.